。今日，特斯拉发布了第三季度财报，马斯克终于确定了万众期待的赛博皮卡的发布日期。赛博皮卡将会在下个月三十号正式开始交付。在财报的电话会议中，马斯克还回答了众多投资者最为关心的问题：从赛博皮卡预计的交付量到自动驾驶的当前进展，再到墨西哥工厂、擎天柱机器人、两万五千美元的新车型等等。通过马斯克的答复，你可以对特斯拉的整体进展有更深入的认识。本期视频，我将记者问的所有问题和马斯克的回答做了精炼的剪辑和翻译，并分好了章节。你可以从进度条中自由地跳到你更感兴趣的话题。现在，让我们开始今天的视频。首先，记者询问马斯克关于2024年赛博皮卡的交付量预测。How many Cybertruck deliveries do you anticipate for 2024? I struggle to make an accurate guess at this point. Going back to what I said earlier, that the ramp is going to be extremely difficult, and like like I said, it's, there's no way around that. If you try to make, if, if we just try to do some copycat vehicle design, of which there are literally 200 models that are slight variations on a theme in the combustion engine world, just distinctions without a difference, then you know it's really not that hard. But if you want to do something radical and innovative, and and something really special. The Cybertruck. It is extremely difficult because there's nothing to copy. You have to invent not just the car, but the way to make the car. So, the more uncharted the territory, the less predictable the outcome. Now, I can say that if you say, "Well, where will things end up?" I think we'll end up with roughly a quarter million Cybertrucks a year, and I don't think we're going to reach that output rate next year. I think、we'll、probably reach it sometime in 2025. That's my best guess. Could you please provide an update on capacity expansion plans for companies' factories in Berlin and Austin, and the opening schedule of Gigafactory in Mexico? In Mexico, we're we're laying the groundwork to begin construction and doing doing all the long lead items. But I think we want to just get a sense for what the global economy is like before we go full tilt on the Mexico factory. I am worried about the high interest rate environment that we're in. It's I just can't emphasize this enough. That the vast majority of people buying a car is about the monthly payment, and as interest rates rise, the proportion of that monthly payment that is interest increases naturally. So that's if, if interest rates remain high or if they go even higher, it's that much harder to for people to buy the car. They simply cannot afford it. So, and and we are tracking, I believe, at this point for Model Y to be the not just in revenue but in unit volume. If you compare that to the other vehicles that are number two and number three and whatnot, they they cost much less than our car. So you know we're, we're just hit, hitting low of large numbers situations here. I know people want us to advertise, and we are advertising. I think there is some is a thing to be gained on the advertising front. I don't think it's nothing, but informing people of a car that is great that they cannot afford doesn't doesn't really help. So that that is really the thing that must be solved is to make the car. Affordable, or you know, the average person cannot buy it for any amount of money, or they or for, they simply can't afford it. Current sell side consensus as, assumes that Tesla will deliver 2.3 million vehicles in 2024, representing 28 percent growth versus 2023 guidance. Is this growth rate achievable without any mass market launches in 2024? And when does Tesla expect to return to its 50 percent long term CAGR? Yeah, I mean, the risk of stating the obvious, it is not possible to have a Compound growth rate of fifty percent forever, or you will exceed the mass of the known universe. So, but I, I think we will grow very rapidly, much faster than any other car company on earth by far. Do you have a, an approximate timeline in mind for the robot taxi, driven or non-driven? What excites you most about how this project is progressing? Well, robot taxi is like necessarily non-driven. The I guess I am very excited about our progress with autonomy. The end-to-end, -end, nothing but nets. Self-driving software is amazing. It drives me all around Austin with no interventions. So, you know, this is clearly the the right move. You know, so it, it's it's really pretty amazing. And obviously, that, that same software and approach will enable Optimus to do useful things and enable Optimus to to learn how to do things simply by looking. So, you know, extremely exciting in the long term. As I mentioned before, you know, given that economic output is Number of people times productivity. You no longer have a constraint on on people. Effectively, you've got a humanoid robot that can do as much as you'd like. Your your economy is quasi infinite, you know, infinite for all 
intents and purposes. So, and I don't think anyone is going to do it better than Tesla, not by a long shot. Bus Dynamics is impressive, but their robot lacks a brain, sort of like the Wizard of Oz or whatever. Yeah, lacks a brain. And then you also need to be able to design the humanoid robot you know, in such a way that it can be mass manufactured. And then at some point, the robots will manufacture the robots. Now, obviously, we need to be, make sure that there's a good place for humans in that future, and we do not create some variant of the Terminator outcome. So we're going to put a lot of effort into localized control of the humanoid robot. So you, you know, basically anyone will be able to shut it off locally. And you can't change that. Even if you, like a software update, you can't change that. It has to be hard-coded. Why was the price dropped on FSD if it is getting better and Robotaxi is expected so soon? Well, we just wanted to make it more affordable. Uh, some more people will try it. I think over time, the price of FSD will increase proportionate to its value. So I would regard the current price as a kind of a temporary low. Will Optimus be working on Gigafactory lines next year? If so, how many would you guess will be deployed? I think at this point, we are not ready to discuss details of the Optimus program, but we will make, provide periodic updates online. So as you can see, we're, you know, Optimus a year ago, rarely walk, and now it can do yoga. So a few years from now, probably do ballet. It, it sounds like you don't think the truck will ramp to significant volume until its third year of production. Should we have a similar anticipation for the ramp of the next gen platform? Or is there any reason that we should be maybe more optimistic or pessimistic about the ramp profile there? Thank you. Yeah. I, I mean, to be clear, it's not really the third year of production. It's kind of like the 18th month of production is roughly my guess. So. It's just that they happen to, it'll happen. They've got the, it starts this year, spans next year, and gets to 2025. So technically, there are three calendar years in there, but there's actually only 18, 18 months, not three years. I would be very disappointed if it took us, and that would be shocking if it took us three years. But 18 months from initial deliveries to have to reach volume and reach prosperity with an immense, I, I can't tell you how much the blood, sweat, and tears level required to achieve that is just staggering. I have been through it many times. And then here, here we go again, you know, Savage Truck is, yeah, I mean, we dug our own grave with Savage Trucks, you know, no, nobody, I, generally, I probably, nobody digs our grave better than themselves. And so, uh, you know, it, it is, uh, you know, Savage Truck is one of those, one of those special pro products that comes along only once in a long while. And, and special products that come along once in a long while are just incredibly difficult to bring to market, to reach volume, to, to be prosperous. It's fundamental to the nature of the newness. So now the sort of high volume, low cost, small vehicle is actually much more conventional. Yeah. In terms of like the technologies we're putting into it, we didn't have to invent how to bend full hard stainless steel or have mega 9,000 ton castings or the largest hot stamping in the world or new. Yeah. High volume. I, I think it will be quite a fast ramp. So it, it, as long as you're saying, we're doing everything possible to simplify that vehicle in order to achieve a units per minute level that uh, is unheard of in the auto industry. Yeah. Keep, I mean, the simplification makes it easier to automate. It also makes it lower cost. Yeah. Like it's intrinsically lower cost. Just to be clear is it'll be cool, but it's utilitarian. It's not meant to be, you know, fill you with all one magic. It's a, it can get you from A to B. It'll be so beautiful, but it's, it's utilitarian. It's a utility. Doesn't have 14 inches of travel under suspension. Yeah. As an example. <laughs> yes. It has a lot of bells and whistles. Just to focus on the cost per vehicle, you know, coming down in, in future quarters, as you discussed in your written remarks, I'm curious as to what the levers of that could be. Is it more scale, more factory utilization? Is it material cost reductions? Is it things like giga casting? I mean, could you just kind of give us some data points to give us confidence that that's going to come down over time. And if I can sneak one in, please, there are press reports and I know how perilous it is to believe some of these, <laughs> uh, but they say that you've included radar as an option in some model wise in China. And I'm just here to ask if that's true. And if so, why? Thank you. We've not included radar. We, we have radar as a Tesla designed radar as an experiment in the model S and X, but that's it. We'll see whether that experiment is worth it, but there are no plans to, to 
integrate radar into 3 and Y. And just as humans drive well, and in fact, an, an excellent human driver can drive with amazing safety simply with their eyes. The car will far exceed because, I mean, the car is looking at all directions at once. So we don't have eyes in the back of my head. So, and, and it, the computer never gets tired and never gets distracted, get drunk, hopefully. And so r- radar is, you know, it, it, what really matters is how much does it affect the probability of an accident? And in order for the radar to be effective, you have to be able to do radar only braking. You have to do actions that are ra- radar only. Otherwise you get this disambiguation problem between vision and radar. That's why we actually turned off the radar in cars historically that we had to, all three and Y used to have radar, but we turned it off because the radar actually generated more noise than signal. Now the Tesla designed radar is a high resolution radar that has some potential to be useful, but, but the jury is, is still very much out on whether that is in fact the case. Well, yeah. On the cost question, I guess, from the vehicle side, like, you know, as Drew mentioned earlier, we are always trying to engineer our products to be cheaper to make and more efficient to make. That comes obviously on the engineering side as we come up with new innovations, but as well on the supply chain side with our partners, we work with them to automate some of their lines, remove their, you know, bottlenecks and their high costs as well on the logistics side, getting parts to the factory. It's not like a one thing that yeah. you have to attack cost everywhere. And we do it ruthlessly at all times. Operations, efficiency, all of the all of the above. Yeah, I mean, I would say there's a whole laundry list of things which we are chasing. We internally call it the cost talk, where we're literally going line by line and saying, how can we make it better? And it's a grind. The grind. Game, game of pennies. Yeah, it's, it's like Game of Thrones, but but pennies. Is I mean, first approximation. If you've got a forty thousand dollar car, and roughly ten thousand items in that car, that means each thing on average costs four bucks. So in order to get the cost down, say by 10%, you have to get 40 cents out of each part on average. It is a game of pennies. Um, we play it. So Willingly. We play it. Yeah. Really just we've, we've done it many times. And, uh, you, you know, even something as simple as like a, a sticker, you know, there's too many stickers internally in the car that nobody ever sees. There's, it's, you know, Something as simple as a QR code. You might think, well, putting a QR code on, on part, why not just put them, put them on there? It's like, well, who, are we actually going to use that QR code? Cost a penny. Yeah, exactly. And then inevitably, sometimes the QR code doesn't go on properly or you can't read it properly and then it stops the line. It's can, more than a penny. It does feel like digging a tunnel with a spoon at times. <laughs> Very much like <laughs> King Prison. Yeah. <laughs> Regarding autopilot and AI, our vehicles have now driven over half a billion miles with FSD beta full self-driving beta, uh, and that number is growing rapidly. We recently completed uh, a 10,000 GPU cluster of H100s. We think probably bringing it into operation faster than anyone's ever bought, brought that much compute per unit time into production, since trading is the fundamental limiting factor on progress with full self-driving and vehicle autonomy. We're also seeing significant promise with FSD version 12. This is the end-to-end AI where it's photon count in, controls out, or really you can think of it as there's a, just a large bit coming in and a, and a tiny bit stream going out, compressing reality into a very small set of output, which is actually kind of how humans work. The vast majority of human data input is optics from our eyes. And so we are like the car, photons in, controls out with neural nets, just neural nets in the middle. It's very interesting to think about that. We will continue to invest significantly in AI development as this is really the, the, the massive game changer. And I mean, success in this regard in the long term, I, I think has the potential to make Tesla the most valuable company in the world by far. If you have fully autonomous cars at scale and fully autonomous humanoid robots that are truly useful, it's not clear what the limit is. Regarding en- energy storage, we deployed four gigawatt hours of energy of storage products in Q3. And as this business grows, the energy vision is becoming our highest margin business. Energy and service now contribute over half a billion dollars to quarterly profit. The Cybertruck, I know a lot of people are excited about the Cybertruck. Uh, I am too. I've driven the car. It's an amazing product. I do want to emphasize that there will be enormous challenges in, in reaching volume production with the Cybertruck and then in making the Cybertruck 
cash flow positive. This is simply normal for when you've got a, a product with a lot of new technology or any new vehicle, brand new vehicle program, but especially one that is as different and advanced as the Cybertruck, that you will have problems proportionate to how many new things you're trying to solve at scale. So I just want to emphasize that while I think this is potentially our best product ever, and I think it is our best product ever, it is going to be require immense work to reach volume production and be cash flow positive at a price that people can afford. Uh, often people do not understand what is truly hard. That is why I say prototypes are easy, production is hard. People think it's the idea or you make a prototype, you, you design a car. And it's not as though designing a car is it just anyone can do it. it. It does require taste. It does require effort to design a prototype. But the difficulty of going from a prototype to volume production is like 10,000% harder to get to volume production than to make the prototype in the first place. And then it is even harder than that to reach positive cash flow. That is why there have not been new car startups that have been successful for a hundred years, apart from Tesla. I just want to temper expectations for Cybertruck. It's a great product, but financially it will take know, a year to 18 months before it is a significant positive cash flow contributor. I wish there was some way to for that to be different, but that's, that's my best guess. It, it, you know, so it, it, it really, it, the demand is off the charts. We have over a million people who have reserved the car. So it's not an demand issue, but we have to make it and we need to make it at prices that people can afford. Insanely difficult things. In conclusion, we continue to focus on ramping production while maintaining a positive cash flow. And we continue to target and expect to have around 1.8 million vehicle deliveries as stated earlier this year. The Tesla AI team is, I think, one of the world's best. And I think it is actually by far the world's best when it comes to real world. I'll say that again, Tesla has the best real world AI team on earth, period. And it's getting better. And uh, lastly, I wanted to thank uh, all of our employees who are making a lot of extra effort during uncertain times. Thank you very much for your hard work and the impact that you're making.